All right, thank you for, to the New Orleans Touchdown Club. It's always good to come out here and speak. And it's better speaking after a win. Played Tulsa this last weekend, and uh, I don't know if people realized how good Tulsa was. The record doesn't indicate it, but that's a team that has uh, played a lot of teams really tough. Had lost Oklahoma State and Michigan State, but just in the conference play, you know, they <clears throat> were up on SMU, I believe, 30 to 16 with about eight minutes and 10 seconds left to go in the game and lost the game in triple overtime. And then they played Memphis, who's a, maybe the best team in the league right now, and uh, had the ball on the 12-yard line, kicking a winning field goal with just seconds remaining and miss it and, and lose that ball game. I think we caught them at a time when they were a little bit down, but that's a good football team, and it was a great win for us. That win gave us uh, our sixth win, and that's a mark that we've been looking for. Uh, made us bowl eligible. Last year, it took us to the 12th game, and 59 minutes left to go in that game before we were able to, you know, solidify a bowl. And so we're excited about being six and three at this point in time, being bowl eligible. Um, I think this is the uh, only third time in the school history that we've uh, been bowl eligible back-to-back -back seasons. Uh, one time was in 79 and 80. The last time was in 97 and 98. Uh, this will be Tulane's 13th bowl game in school history. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm real proud to be part of uh, the things that are going on at Tulane. Coach Fritz has done a tremendous job uh, with the culture there and getting these players to believe that they can win. Uh, you know, when we were down at Houston, I mean, they jumped on us so fast. It was 28 to 7, I believe, in the first quarter. And I started adding up in my head how bad this can be. And uh, our kids, uh, they just fought and fought and fought. And then we came back and won that ball game. And I really think they, they started believing they could win. Even, you know, we lost uh, a couple of weeks ago at Navy. And um, it looked really bad at one point. We're down, uh, I can't remember what it was, 31 to 7, maybe, right before half. But it, there was no doubt in everybody's mind, I think that we could come back and win that game. And uh, we came very, very close. We kicked a 50 yard field goal as time ran out to win the game. Thought we could get it to overtime and have a chance to win. Uh, we're very, very competitive right now. We've gotten better. And it's, uh, I want to say this, the American Conference is playing such good football right now. This is a, a real, real conference that's playing outstanding football. Let me just show you, there's four teams right now in the American Conference that are in the top 25. Okay? Uh, and you said Central Florida is the 26th team and uh, sixth ranked team in the country. So they're getting votes. The SEC has five teams. The Big Ten has six teams. The ACC has less than we do. The Pac-12 has less than we do. And the Big 12 has less than we do. So this conference that we're playing in is extremely tough right now. And it's some really, really good football week in and week out. Um, so it's, uh, we've got three games remaining. We're open this week, which is it's coming at a really nice time. Uh, we do have a little bit of injuries, and you know, it's a time for us to get healed up. Uh, we're taking uh, three days of practice this week, trying to work on some fundamentals, trying to let some of the guys that have played so much get a chance to get healed up and then going for this last stretch, the last remaining three games. Um, we talked about the win at Tulsa, and uh, we're undefeated at home. And that's, that's a great, great thing. We're playing really tough there. We're 5-0. And the winning streak goes back to last year. We've won seven straight games in a row at Yuleman Stadium. So we're changing the culture there. It's a tough place to come in and play. And uh, hopefully we can uh, remain undefeated at home. Um, last week we had the third largest crowd in Yuleman uh, Stadium history. We had 27,000 fans. It was a really, uh, uh, really helped us win that ball game. I thought they really came out and supported us. The weather was great. It was a great atmosphere to be a part of. Um, with that win last week over Tulsa, we had the Conference Defensive Player of the Week, P.J. Hall, that's not our safety, had five pass breakups. 
numerous tackles. He had the strip on the uh, receiver, which was uh, scooped up and scored by Willie Langham. And that was probably the turning point of the game. We scored 14 points just, just like that until I turned the game around for us and, and propelled us on to win that, win that ball game. Uh, the three games we got left, and we got Temple here in two weeks in Philly, and then we are back home against Central Florida, and then we go to Dallas to play SMU. So those are the remaining three games. It's going to be a very challenging for us. But <clears throat> the thing that uh, you realize about this league, I mean, uh, the team that shows up and plays the hardest and makes the fewest mistakes usually wins the football game. And we got room for improvement. We have not played our best game. Uh, the thing that we got that's kind of been our Achilles heel is uh, a lot of penalties. And we've, we've got to make sure that we're addressing that in this open week. Because if we're going to win the, any of these next three ball games uh, with the opponents that we're playing, we're going to have to play at a higher level, a more disciplined level. And... Uh, you know, play close to perfect as we possibly can. Uh, I think we can win all three if we play up to our potential. So, uh, again, I think Coach Fritz has done a, just a phenomenal job with the culture and turning the program, getting the players to believe. We've had some good players there. We've got a lot of players that we've had just in recent years that have gone into the NFL and, and they're doing some good things and have made rosters. So, let's just keep this thing rolling. I made a couple notes as I was listening. And uh, got it. <laughs> Started. <laughs> we'll check those out. But we appreciate what everybody is, uh, is doing for us and the support that we're getting. And uh, it's a good time to be a football fan in South Louisiana when everybody's winning. And uh, really proud to be part of Tulane football. So at this time, I'd love to open it up. Anybody got any questions? Coach, one of the things I noticed about the team when I first looked at it this year, especially against Houston, was a team speed. Um, is that something that was focused on from the beginning when you go out and recruit, or is it just kind of happened? Well, it's always uh, a plus to have it, and, you, and we look for it. And uh, I think we've done a, you know, we've, we've had to, I think there's two players left on the team that were here before we got here. So these are Coach Fritz's guys, and uh, we've looked hard to, to recruit some more speed, and I think it's showing up. I think also that helps you is a team that's uh, played together and, and knowing systems, they play fast. And uh, I think that's, that helps you there as well. But um, there's no doubt we're making a conscientious effort to, to recruit speed. Hey, Coach, does he, as a defensive coordinator, does the F SMU Memphis game give you a nightmare? And um, can you talk about how much more difficult it is now to play defense in college football? Yeah, I tell you, the American Conference is a nightmare. Yeah, uh, it's, they're, you, they're so innovative in this conference and how they're using the quarterbacks and reading the, the RPO game. And, it, it makes it very difficult. The rules are set to help offenses and score points. Uh, you know, I think last, uh, what was that final score, 54-48? A, a lot of football. I, I really didn't care who won the game. I was pulling for each of them to have 1,000 yards apiece and score a lot of points. And uh, they came close. Uh, but it is. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what it, what it is and why they are able to do it. To me, the... Um, the American Conference is a lot like the Big 12. They're putting a lot of points on the board and scoring, and it makes it very, very difficult, you know, to uh, to play really, you know, I don't say play good defense. People are playing good defense. It's just that, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of points scored nowadays. Um, so the game's a little bit more wide open, and you get a quarterback that can throw it and run the ball, and then run the RPOs. It really stresses the defense. You know, last week against Tulsa, that was what they were not able to do. They had a, you know, a quarterback that couldn't run. You feel a lot better about going into those ball games and not having to defend a, a, a really elusive quarterback and then one that could throw and beat you on the RPO games, you know, with his arm, you know, like Houston. And that was, uh, you know, they're so good at what they do. So, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's very difficult to defend. 
Um, I think we got a pretty good handle on it. The thing that you got to do is play very uh, complimentary football. I mean, your offense has got to be able to hold on to the ball and sustain drives, and, and you've got to be really good in the kicking game and make them go a, a long distance. So I think that's probably one thing that we're doing a, a pretty good job of right now is playing complimentary football and playing as a, a one unit. Um, kind of new Tulane fan. I wasn't a Tulane hater. I love the atmosphere over there. Got some finicky fans. It was nice to see the stadium full, but they come late and leave early. It gets cold, they leave. I don't get it. It's good football out there. Uh, one thing I noticed is the penalties really killed y'all. You know, fight yourselves. Another thing I noticed, and you might not know why, it's uh, Tulsa, I think they went for it for two early on, and they went for it on fourth down. Thought they had a poor kicker. They had a great kicker. Do you have any idea what he did? Well, the kicker had been very poor. I mean, he really, you know, missed the field goals that would have beat SMU. He missed uh, the field goal that beat Memphis. So he was uh, has not kicked the ball well. He kicked the ball outstanding for uh, against, against us. us. I think he was four for four on their field goals. Um, they did. They did kind of do some things that were, you know, questionable and why they why they went for it when they did. Um, I don't know why, but um, yeah, they. Um, Addressing the fans and stuff, we got to win. We got to keep winning. All right, keep them there. Keep them there longer, and um, keep the students there longer. Uh, with the penalty situation, if you look at Coach Fritz's record over his career, he's one of the. He always prides himself in being the most disciplined team, and it, it seems like we're just a little bit, you know, snake bit with all these penalties that we're getting. We're addressing it in practice. We're trying to play clean. We talk about it constantly. And uh, made a big deal of it on uh, Monday morning meeting after the after the ball game. So I think the players realize that if they're going to continue to win and move forward this season, that we got to clean it up. And uh, I think it really struck. I, mean, I think they're embarrassed about how many penalties that we've had this year. And that's it. Thank y'all very much.